Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard and today we're going to be taking a look at another movie holster. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have already made one version of this thing and it did not come out exactly like I wanted it. It's not bad looking and this is from the 2001 TNT movie uh, Crossfire Trail with uh, Tom Selleck who played Rafe Covington who is a uh, kind of a drifter who, event well you can watch the movie and see what it's all about. It's a good movie. One of my favorite uh, Tom Selleck Western movies. My favorite, of course, being uh, Quigley Down Under, I think. Um, it's made for a Schofield, Smith & Wesson Schofield with the, I think this is the seven inch barrel. Yep, seven inch barrel on it. And it fits in here okay. I did make this one. Uh, my first pattern was the correct size. It's just not correctly made to the movie holster. The part right here, the apron on the back should be a little bit wider and up a little higher. So I need to change the shape of the holster a little bit to allow it to go up a little bit farther. Um, I did not completely finish this one just because I was not happy with the way it came out. And I knew that as soon as I made my first cut on the apron, I actually cut it straight, which was the wrong thing to do. And then I went back and looked at some more pictures of it. it it's hard to get really good pictures of it. Um, from you know a movie online like that um i it is available on amazon uh if you got amazon prime um I, no i actually think you had to purchase this one but um good movie and good looking holster now he actually wears uh two holsters in the movie one of them is for the smith and wesson schofield the other holster is for the uh 1872 open top and he carries a third gun in the movie which is the 1876 winchester centennial Anyways, I've got to redo this one. Now, my original pattern that I made for it, you can see it's got a lot of duct tape on it because, or masking tape, because I had to change things on it. And this is a Mexican loop style holster. And you can see right there, I actually made that strap straight knowing better because it's not that way in the movie. But it folds over and then the holster actually tucks inside that strap. So your back strap, instead of having to rivet or screw or sew a strap onto there, holds the holster down. And then your bullet or belt loop is right on the back there. So then I went ahead and made another one and kind of marked it up with some of the mistakes I made on it. And it's still not exactly right. Uh, after Instead of cutting out another one, I went ahead and took this up and I was looking at pictures of it online and I thought you know what I still made some more mistakes so I've got some darker pen marks on here I got a new piece of paper I actually got two of them here because although I would like to get it done on the first try I don't anticipate getting it right so I'm going to go ahead and um, try this again change some shapes of it a little bit and hopefully get the pattern right and then I'll make another one with leather and see how it comes out so I'm going to trace the whole thing out because I think I got it pretty close to being right. I do know that there are some areas that I want to make wider, some I want to make narrower, some I want to make taller, all that good stuff. Okay, so if I look at some of my pencil marks I've got on here, or my pen marks on the old pattern, you can see the Mexican loop part, the strap is a little different. Um, of course, on here it's definitely wrong. I did manage to salvage it to an extent. On the holster, um, I did make it a little bit curved, but you can see right here, this is really closer to where it needs to be curved at. And you can see on here, I've got some new lines drawn on here because I had those lines going straight across there and that's not the way it is. They're actually kind of offset a little bit. Um, I need to change the shape of the top of it there. This part right here actually dips down a little bit farther than that, I think. And the shape here is a little bit taller. And you can see where I kind of sketched out my line there a little bit. So I'm going to take this and bring it up just a little bit to where I think it needs to be. And this part actually comes down kind of somewhat straight. And then my line goes a little bit under and then over a little bit farther here. So a little bit of sketching and all that good stuff. And I think I will have it right. I hope it's going to definitely be closer than the one I actually made, uh, the holster I actually made, because that one is not right. It's uh, kind of a neat holster, not a whole lot of carving on it. There is some stamping done on there. 
And although I do not have the exact right camouflage tool, and that's all that's used on this holster, I do have one that is really, really close, and I'm okay with that. Um, and I do have the shiny spots that go across the, uh, the Mexican loop part, the loop part of it on there. Um, I also need to make the holster come up just a little higher, so you can see I've got some marks right here, pencil marks. I think that'll get the shape a little closer because on his holster that the loop does come up pretty high on there so there's not much above the loop but quite a bit below the loop there and I think that's going to get me pretty close to where I needed to be I've extended that I've lowered that I've extended that I did make it just slightly narrower than I made this one because you can see on this one there's also pencil marks on there where I transferred it to that one and Slightly narrower here because there is definitely plenty of room here. There's a lot of room behind the trigger guard to the end there. Not a lot, but plenty enough anyways. All right, let's get to trimming it up some. Now I'm only gonna trim part of it at a time because I want to make sure that I get both sides uh, symmetrical. So I'm gonna cut from the middle to the, it'll be the outside of the holster, the part that you'll see. And one of the things I did discover about this paper, this is the paper from Weaver that they wrap the leather in. If you put a nice hard pen line on there, it actually helps it fold right directly on that line. Use my fingernail just a little bit just to make sure it's in there right. Now I'm gonna take and trace this because I did change the contour of that a little bit. The back part of it is gonna be the apron part of it. So I will take and curve this into a little bit better. A little smoother transition there. Then I can cut the rest of it. Okay, here is another attempt at it and what I'm going to do on here is I marked little circles on there for my um, the ends of my loops there my loop that is the center so I'm going to make a lot of noise and punch these holes out all right now this part is going to be eyeball too so I need to start from the bottom of the circles there because that's going to be the top edge of my loop there but there's my eight spots and there are eight on there i've seen some pictures of different holsters that different people have made they claim are the crossfire holster and there are only six on there i think i've seen one with like five but there are eight in the movie now to me the pattern making process is kind of boring to film and really sit there and watch it too when someone's doing one but if you are new to leather work and you just want to give it a shot, which is what I always encourage, um, you might want to watch some of this to learn at least how I do it. Not necessarily saying it's the right way to do it, but um, the steps might, uh, might be a little bit better. And if you take your time with it, you may have a more harmonious outcome. For those of you who have already seen the movie, if you haven't, I encourage you to go watch it. It is a good movie. Okay, so now I don't want to fold my crease on there yet. What I want to do is I want to get this tucked through here. And that is the wrong way. That would make it a left-hand holster. So I'm going to flip it around the other way. It's a nice thing about these two. If you are a lefty and all you got to do is flop it the other direction. So now before I push that crease in there, I'm gonna put this through there. I'm gonna pull it up to where it's gonna go, which is gonna be right about there where that bump starts to come out there a little bit. And yeah, I already think it looks a little nicer. Now I'm gonna hold this right here and I'm gonna kind of push that up. And the line should actually be almost 90 degrees across there, pretty close to it. His holster does seem to rock forward a little bit at the bottom. It may be some of the angles I've looked at um, in the movie where he's holding it, but I think that is going to look a little closer to what the one in the movie does. 
I think anyways maybe I'll trim up some more who knows but anyways now I'm going to go ahead and risk it and get this cut out of leather and um, try it again All right, let me get this big piece out of the way and then we'll start working on this. All right, it's time to cut right on the line now. Okay, it's all cut out. Now there's a couple other things we gotta do. We gotta establish a stitch groove on there. Uh, the stitch groove is going to go all the way around it, even though it does not get stitched all the way around. It only gets stitched right about there. It is open toed. And then there's another groove that goes on the inside here. I, I think it's about an inch in, and that's where the pattern gets stamped in there. And some of that is gonna to have to be kind of freehand down here at the bottom and a little bit at the top. And then around here and in the middle of the loop, we also get some of the camouflage tool. So we'll get to working on that next. Now certainly you can do as much stamping on these things as you want. I'm going for the movie holster, so I'm trying to make it look pretty close to what was seen in the movie. So that's what I'm going for. Um, but it would really look good if it was done all the way around too. You're never going to see the back sides or underneath there, but knowing it's there is pretty nice. All right, now that spacing didn't come out too bad. Uh, I do have them just a little bit farther get there. It's not a big deal. What I should have done was started here, went this way, started here, went this way, and then where my strap covers there, I could have covered up any, um, any misalignments or anything, but that actually came out pretty good. And I think it looks pretty close to um, old Rafe Covington's holster in the movie. Now, the next thing I wanna do is get my stone out of the way there. And I need to get out my beveling tool because this, I think, is going to be the final product right here. All right, it doesn't take a whole lot for this holster, so we're gonna let that tack up a little bit. And once it uh, no longer sticks to your fingers, and it's still a little damp, then you can stick the two halves together. All right, now I should be able to squeeze that seam together and keep the holes lined up. Pay attention to the edge as well as the angle that the needle's on. Because once you get it stuck there, it's going to stay. Okay, so I peeled off every piece of thread that was left on that spool, and it's about five times the length of this, which should be, keeping my fingers crossed, should be enough. Um, doing a saddle stitch, I got an extra 10 inches or so pulled through each needle. I don't tie them on the ends. Um, I like to just stick them through there and go that way with it. All 
All right, just enough thread with a couple of back stitches in there to uh, get the whole thing sewn up. That's uh, most of the time I get pretty lucky cutting it that close, but uh, this time I didn't have an option. That was all the thread I had. One thing I hate about using white thread is when you're hand stitching like this with a saddle stitch, you're passing the whole length of the thread through each one of those holes. It's going to start off really white or pretty white when you begin, and as you go, it's going to get darker and darker because it's going to get dirtier and dirtier. Um, I've got that part all sewn up now, so the next thing to do is got to get some dye on this thing. So I'm going to get all this stuff cleared off, get my plastic and paper on the table, and then I'm uh, going to throw some dye on this thing. All right, time to get a little bit of dye on this thing, and I'm going to be using... Uh, Phoebing's Pro Dye. This is a light brown, which I hope will come out like this one did up here, because if it comes out like this one, that's a little too dark, I think. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna dye it inside and out. Now, I would like to dip dye it. I just didn't set it up that way, so I am going to dye it with a Merkin here. And I did that kind of backwards. I used a gray one for my black, and I'm using a black one for my brown, so eh. Now this dye is pretty smelly, um, but it works really well. You want to get that on there as even as you can, too. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna let that dry. Then we'll get to finishing it up. Once that dye is dry on there, I have a feeling it's gonna dye a lot lighter than that. I do like that color, but uh, I don't wanna go too dark with it. That up there might be a little lighter than what I want. Anyways, dry time. Okay, the holster is good and dry now. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my spots on here. And let me see, one, two, three, four, six, seven. All right, I got eight spots there. There's a couple different ways to do this. I do have a spot setting tool and these are two prongs on there and they are really long ones and I'm dropping everything. Um, this little spot setting tool here, this is for setting spots, domed cap spots and they are size specific so what you got to do is get the spot put in there and that'll keep the tines from wanting to um, go outward as you're driving it through the leather now i have had mishaps with these and i do have a uh this is an anvil that goes on there and it is curved so that the when the tines go through it they'll go inward like that so i'm gonna i got my little marks on there i'm gonna go ahead and attempt to set these just driving them in i like to do this when it's nice and dry because if you do it while the leather's wet you will get a ring on there from the brass piece on here the guide for the spots so i want to avoid that and i try to get the uh anvil lined up underneath there just right don't put a lot of pressure on the brass piece Just drive it right on in there. Wish this had a little more friction on there to hold it. So that looks pretty good. And the tines are folded over and curled inward there. So it works really well as long as you get them on there just right. So we'll go ahead and try to get all eight of these driven in there with no issues. At least that's my goal. The tricky part is getting the anvil lined up right underneath where you want it.
All right, that looks pretty good. All eight of them are in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The spacing looks pretty good, and they're pretty well lined up, maybe just a tad bit off. Now the next thing is to get this thing folded over and tucked through there, but there is a little bit of a problem because when I let it dry out, I let it dry out. So I need to uh, get it wet down again so that I can get it to fold. And I am gonna wet the whole thing down just so I can avoid any streaking or anything with the dye. Now it is an alcohol-based dye or an oil-based dye in an alcohol carrier. So water, it's not taking the dye off. I just want to get it evenly wet just in case it causes the dye to shift around or something, you know, kind of settle unevenly or something. And there will be wet molding involved in this thing too because it is going to need uh, to be shaped to the firearm. Okay, so it's a little more flexible now. And we're going to get this thing hopefully folded around here and tucked in there. And that is the way it is supposed to look. Yeah, that looks a lot better, a lot closer to the movie holster than uh, the first one I made. Of course, the color is right because I dyed it. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the gun wrapped up in some paper towels and plastic so it's a little oversized and shove it down in there. Now getting it wet molded also allows you the opportunity of straightening things up. The spine on this was not the straightest and that's happened to me quite a bit when I'm making holsters. But now that it's wet and soft, I can maneuver it till it is straight and let it dry like that and it'll be good. Plenty of room for an inch and a half belt to go through there. Now a lot of times, I like to take my straight edge here, aluminum straight edge I've got is an inch and a half wide and I do have one end of it rounded off on there so that I can slide that through there and I'll let it dry like that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this one. And one of the things that takes the longest with making holsters like this is all the drying time. I had to wet it to stamp it and then I had to um, dye it and then I have to wet mold it to fit the gun in there and everything so each time you do that there's drying time involved in there so it takes a little while now the next things that I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to make up my hammer thong which I probably should have put that in there before I tuck this in but I can still do it it just gets to be more of a pain and then there is another blood knot that goes right through here I gotta punch a couple holes in here because there's a blood knot that goes through the, the apron and the holster. That's to keep these from sliding apart so you can't take it apart like that. Um, but I got to get that in there so that it'll hang down about to there. And it's uh, I got to punch two holes in there, run the blood knot through there. Same thing for the hammer thong. It is a blood knot type hammer thong that he has on there. So I'm going to let this thing dry and then uh, we'll get to doing those last little details on it. And it should be done then.
Okay, so I've got the blood knot on there, and what I did was I punched two holes through there. Uh, I think they are quarter inch, maybe three eighths holes, all the way through the edge of the holster and all the way through the back of the apron on there. And like I said, that's to keep that from moving up and down. Not that it was gonna move anywhere anyways. Uh, they are dyed black in the movie. And I've got the blood knot on there, so it's pretty cool looking little um, little knot style. The only thing I got left to do now, and I've already got the piece of leather cut out for it, is the hammer thong. That one's gonna prove to be quite a bit more difficult to get in there, and it's a little bit wider, especially on the end that goes over the hammer because the slot is kind of wide, the end of the hammer is kind of wide, and it needs to be able to fit over the top of that, so. That's the only thing I've really got left to do, maybe slicking up the edges a little bit, and while that, um, that, uh, Hammer thong is drying. I think I might as well go ahead and slick up these edges some Okay, I kind of like that part of it All right I gotta check on that hammer thong, see if it's ready to go in there. It's not gonna be a lot of fun. I, I, I just know it's not. Okay, it's all dyed up. I did leave the end of it undyed just so I could have something to hang it by and not get too much more dye on my fingers than I already got on there. So we got just a little bit of water left in here and I'm gonna get this thing wet down. That's gonna make it really soft and pliable since it is not sealed yet. All right. Here comes the fun. Now I need the slick side out on the top, so I gotta go in. Let's see, in and then back out. Yep, I think that'll work right there. You don't want it too super tight on there. But now I gotta get this thing flattened back out. Now I gotta do a couple slits in here. It's hard for me to show you this part of it, but uh, blood knots are really pretty cool. Okay, now the next fun part is I gotta cut a slot through the other one and then put the bigger part through it. And that's where it can get a little tricky there too. Open that hole up a little bit, put that point through there. Now that I've got it all nice and deformed, I need to flare it back out like it was. And that should be it. Might be a little hard to see there, but now there's a blood knot on the hammer thong. And let's get the gun put back in there one more time. Put the hammer thong on there. And that's it. The hammer thongs on there and the, I don't know what you want to call this piece here, but the uh, blood knot to hold the uh, holster and the apron together is on there. And that is it. The only thing I got left to do to it now is I'm gonna put some uh, probably leather balm with atom wax on it. I like that finish and um, I'm gonna get it worked in there the best I can. Uh, I could also do Neat's foot oil, which I may do that because I've got quite a bit of Neat's Foot Oil I can pour in a container, dunk the whole thing in there so it gets in all the cracks and crevices and everything in there. So uh, then just wipe off the excess and I think I'll be good there. I do need to let it dry a little bit more, especially the hammer thong and the blood knot on there. But um, yeah, I like it. 
I think it looks a whole lot more like the movie holster um, than the first one I did. There are some differences in the two. Um, you can see the apron is a little higher up on this one than it was on that one. Uh, the end of it is shaped a little bit different. Uh, the trigger guard area is shaped a little different. This one went up to a point right here and it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be gently rounded there. But that's it. That is the holster from, that's my version of the holster from uh, Crossfire Trail, a 2001 TNT movie uh, starring uh, Tom Selleck, um, Virginia Madsen, Walter Brimley, and uh, a couple other characters in there, but uh, pretty good movie and pretty cool holster, I think, anyways. Now, there is another holster to do and the belt. Those will be in some other videos. Anyways, thanks for taking a look at making the holster from Crossfire Trail. If you could, reach up here and hit this button to check out some of my other videos, and then hit this button over here to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.